a lot of this caught people off guard. How did you prepare? Were you prepared uh, for the big surge in demand that we saw as all these shelter in place orders really started to take effect? Yeah, I think like a lot of people, we, we started to really think about this in the early February timeframe and start to build up capacity for what we, what we thought might and could happen. And in fact, I, I don't think anyone could have seen the extent to which and the, how rapidly people had to shift to working from home. So I think the speed of which people change was, was pretty surprising, but we, we did a lot to prepare. And I think since that time, I've invested a lot to make sure that we were ready. And I think like a lot of CEOs, uh, and a lot of companies, I think that first month, those first few weeks, you're really just focused on employee welfare and business continuity. So I think a lot of companies were scrambling, and certainly, you know, we were moving as fast as we could during that time period, like a lot of others. How are you now shifting now that we're starting to talk about reopening and having at least some employees maybe start to go back to work? Well, again, I think I look at it from two different perspectives. One is, is as a CEO of a company who really lives and breathes remote work, and it's in our DNA. And so that's making us use this opportunity as a, as a way to think about maybe we can operate differently as a company, and maybe this is a way, a, a time for us to shift and embrace it holistically, as many other companies are talking about doing. And then, of course, secondly, you know, our products, I would say the usage is, continues to be really high across a lot of our products. So while people are thinking about shifting back to work, I don't think that anyone will, will allow themselves to be caught flat-footed again like they perhaps were in the, in the March and April time frame. You know, another um, issue that certainly caught my attention was you're a public company uh, planning now to go back to being a private company led by Francisco Partners and a PE arm of Elliott Management. The board back in March has approved this. Is that plan to go private still on track? Yes, it is. I mean, it's a um, the, the shareholder vote was uh, approved back in March, and it's a $4.3 billion all-cash deal. Transaction's a great outcome for shareholders, and uh, that deal is on track. We had always said at mid-year, just so we can clear all the regulatory approvals that are necessary, and uh, we're looking forward to that transaction closing. And why go private, especially when all the, quote, virus stocks, stocks that would really benefit from this new work-from-home environment, have really been the leaders in the equity market and really had a lot of investor interest. Why now make the decision to go private? I think for us, we have a, we have a pretty broad portfolio, and, and we were really in, focused over the last couple of years to, make, to invest for additional growth. And really, at some point, we felt we were a, a bit hemmed in by the public markets in terms of our ability to, to shift and, and make the kind of investments that we wanted to. And I think that this opportunity is going to allow us to make more investments, to move more rapidly. And, and I think this period is actually going to unlock a lot of innovation, not just from us, but a lot from a lot of companies, larger and, and startups, uh, because I think a lot more people are living through the real days of living and working from home and working differently and it's exciting to think about how we might be working in the near future. And just curious given your decades of experience especially within the tech sector the dream right is to go public and, and to, to cash in and yet from your experience maybe going private if that's a better way to innovate and stay nimble what would you tell companies particularly in the tech sector that are really debating the public versus private debate about maybe the right path to go? Yeah, it's a, that's an interesting question. I think that a lot of, of entrepreneurs think about, and yes, the, the concept of going public and IPO seems to be like the holy grail for, for a lot of young companies in startup mode. But there's so many different ways to have good outcomes for both, uh, both management and investors. And for us and for a company of our size, companies go through a life cycle, and at different times in the life cycle, you have, need to operate the business differently. And at a scale like us, at 1.3 billion plus in revenue, um, you know we we operate all around the world. We have 4,000 employees, and it's a complex business, and it requires a lot of attention to uh, for investors to understand the story. So in situations like that, where it's not as not as easily accessible, perhaps. And it's a great opportunity for private investors to 
work with the company, work with management, and really make the investment, especially when they believe in the future as much as we do.